case anyone else with permission to this area decides wonder what they're up to um where is my channel so i can check the audio <coughs> adi adio <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, dashboard. Go. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. So, oh no, that's weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something's lying to me. Okay, there I am. So let's get some audio from you. La la la, la la la, la 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 la. la. Yep. Yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Bud is round. Um. Boop. And we go. Ah, we got two more minutes. <laughs> never i never really think about those little nuances until someone mentions it and it's like oh yeah that's <laughs> that is true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's part them curtains it doesn't work every time but when it does oh it's so it's so 90s vhs <laughs> <laughs> hello and welcome to uh some sort of talk show yeah, <laughs> with this guy the not an adequate <laughs> amount of sleep and that other guy over there that really has not gotten enough sleep <laughs> today we're talking yeah. about a slightly higher echelon of um 
demons from the Dungeons and Dragons Monster Manual. Sometimes, <laughs> but you're not demons because they're actually devils. <laughs> what I say? <laughs> that they were demons, which, like in D and D, is different, kind of. <laughs> Except, which in my world, uh, like or the world I like to play in, in Eberron, devils and demons are, are not separated, and it is kind of. Not frustrating, but it is an interesting thing of just like, huh, well, these things that exist, they, they still can exist. They just, there's no reason, there's no, like, actual difference. True. And last week, we started off with, um, you know, what we chose to be the our, our, our starting point of the lowest end of the hierarchical, hierarchical <laughs> ladder. Um, so I started with a lemur, which is just a gross sort of globby proto-devil, <laughs> and even started with a bearded devil? Mm -hmm. Yes. The bearded what... devil. So today we move up the corporate ladder just a little bit, and I am moving on into... Well, I moved on into the concept of, um, not that one, this one, of the Chain Devil. You know what's a weird thing that I, I noticed is that each of the um, devils worth noting, or the more standard devils, each have a secondary sort of title. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So it's like there's the Chain Devil, but it had a different... It has the alternative name of a chiton, K Y T O N. Yeah, um, like the the bearded devil is a barbazoo, and then the devil that I will do later is a gelugun, which somebody pointed out is very close to glue gun, and it makes me sad and happy <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! Um, it's it's weird how. Yours is so called an ice devil, but it's like it doesn't really. There was one depiction back in like fourth edition or something in which it actually was like more ice crystal y than it was insect. Like it still had the insect sort of like <laughs> facial structure, but it was made up of crystals and stuff. So it was like, oh, okay, yeah, that's. That's totally gonna hide in an iceberg or something, and then jump out at you and rip you apart. Yeah, they're kind of weird. Like, especially I, I was reflecting on this that I wanted to do the ice devil um, from the beginning, so that's what I chose. That like uh, the, the the hellish scape of Stygia as my like area to focus on, but it is such an like I don't know. Just a random thing. That all the other things, like humanoids with horns, mostly. And then this one, it's a bug. <laughs> with a lizard tail? Okay. <laughs> like, why is that one, like, the new, like, not the highest form, but somewhere pretty high? They're just like, and they're like, yep, that's that's what we're going to go for. This is, we need, we need a break from the rest of the regular stuff. We'll make it through into that. Sure. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> um, so let us kick things off with the first um, dibbledy do, which is you. A glue gun. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So the um, Gelugon is when I was like reading, which I think is interesting. I uh, it's I think one level below one of the highest levels the pit fiend and then like pit fiend and higher is when you get into like the actual rulers of hell um so one could even argue to a degree that pit fiends themselves are like are as legendary as many of the other ones and so they're uh the ice devils are actually pretty powerful and like are commanders and leaders of the other like dem or uh devilish and fiendish hordes so i i wanted to make this um this kind of scene of i don't know it enjoying its supremacy over other creatures 
<laughs> and being kind of a leader thing. And they try to add like a couple of little designs. We'll see that I go back to my first one, which I don't know if anybody was super, super keen on it. Um, I used that same pose in as it was one of my variants that I decided not to go with for the bearded devil. So sketch things, keep them, think about how you might use them in other ways. But what I think is kind of cool is that the um, the ice devil is actually it's a it's a large creature. So like this is actually pretty scary. It doesn't. I mean, it, it's scary because it's a big bug person. But if we think about that, this is like the same like size as like trolls and ogres and stuff. Like that's pretty terrifying. Or like the Baldra or the, like the. No, I think a Hezro is like a huge creature, but like. This is like too big to ride a horse. Like that's pretty big. <laughs> a guy is scary. The uh the, the one thing that kind of crossed my mind earlier when um we were talking about or when I was mentioning the different sort of looks that the ice devils had, it kind of struck me that it's like yeah, the the way that it's designed, it makes it look a lot like their, you know, like they'll you know that they're like the attackers there but by the nature of being a devil in, in the devil category you know they should still have that little that that deal making nature about them you know that that corruption sort of aspect to them but they just don't mm -hmm. look like it you know they look more like a like a demon where they're just like carnage and blood <laughs> yeah Something, though, that, that they do kind of bring up with these ones is that since they're, like, just below the Pit Fiends, that they are, they are, like, super fearless in battle because they want, they want no reason to become, like, to be demoted. And so they take, like, crazy jobs in trying to, like, earn that level, that, like, that final tier of being a, a Pit Fiend. Also, kind of like devious and backstabbery, but not exactly because they're one away. All they have to do is somehow show up their boss or <laughs> show off to their boss so that they can be, or to their boss's boss, which are like the rulers of hell, uh, to be promoted to pit fiend. So they're like, it was kind of an interesting thing. And that's kind of why I wanted this like rallying the troops sort of thing of like a, they're they're more than just like yeah i rush in with the spear that spear is not only dangerous but also like this is my like my representation of power this is what i will use but they were kind of like i don't know it's weird because like um since they're also so strong they're like there's kind of like the way that they describe them is that they're used as like guards for like the the higher level like pit fiends and other stuff and so it's just like it kind of almost seems like they wouldn't see any action <laughs> but i think it's one of the, it's also kind of like a you know keep your um your friends close but your enemies closer kind of thing that once they get promoted to these high level things one of the best things to do is keep them as honor guard and not let them actually earn glory so that they don't get promoted <laughs> oh no so would... I could imagine how amazing and interesting it would be the ice fiends promoting rebellion, trying to create weaknesses so that a something happens so that they can come into the line and either save or let their boss get killed, <laughs> like proving their worth. And I think that'd be kind of like a an, an interesting little meta story of like, yeah, like if you didn't, if you're not going to send me off to war, We'll just let war get here. You should have sent me away. Like, I could have died valiantly. You know, that's more in line with the devil archetype than what the what the art just kind of lends itself to be. I like that. <laughs> yeah. But it is kind of like, especially with its hunchy legs and stuff, it's very easy to look at it like, oh, yeah, it's a weird, nasty bug man. Like, it has a spear. Oh, no. But there's like, no, this these guys are... These guys are like bosses. They're like really fucking big and scary and conniving. And more than just being like these, like, I don't know, 
dangerous in their own right. And like the spear, their attacks that can make like two or three attacks, like all also do cold damage to like start freezing and slowing you in place. But technically, they can summon up so many other devils to do their bidding. So it's just like when you fight one of these, you're usually fighting all of those guys down there too. Maybe. The, I don't know. The, the scene that played out in my head when I first saw the the pose was um a like um a caravan just kind of like passing through and like like not visiting but you know like just kind of mm -hmm. like in the middle of like trading <clears throat> through you know like they're just trading their wares and they just ended up <laughs> in this hell like through from do. portal to portal and the, the this ice devil just kind of like why do i have to be assigned to this <laughs> this is dumb <laughs> if you if you idiots decide to do anything weird i will destroy all of you <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like i kind of really pissed off staff sergeant <laughs> yeah i wanted this like i've always kind of liked the monkey king like illus like uh drawings and stuff i think there's like a, a nice interesting way in which monkeys lazily hold on to things and how they do that with like the the monkey king staff of just like it's dangerous it's scary and all but it's also it's just tired of it all it doesn't it gives no shits about how it looks or like to you or anything <laughs> I don't know. I think I, I get pretty close around here of finishing. A lot of small t uh, details, but then, like, I don't know, I put up my my handle on there and then realize, like, you know what, let's change the colors a little and add some snow. Like, <laughs> I don't think I... <laughs> I gotta, like, watch my video before I decide to, like, put the uh, put up the, the end mark. I keep forgetting because, I don't know, I'm still kind of new to using Procreate um, that I can watch my video before exporting it. So I keep on like exporting it and thinking, oh, I'll go back to it and like add on more. Yeah, I didn't even throw up. I didn't even throw up the monkey this time. Um, but I'll, I'll get into that <laughs> when we'll, we'll we we'll we'll jump into when we jump into Blender later. All right, we I think some this red for the eyes. I think I'd love to, and I've always kind of wanted, like, to have a, a mission or something um, to go try to, like, steal or obtain, like, a bearded devil's barbed uh, glaive or an ice devil's, like, um, ice spear. I think that'd be a cool, like, that seems like a real mission of, like, <laughs> yes. We need to go to hell to steal one of these so that we can come back and put an end to this, like, this other evil. And whether or not you're going to steal it, kill one, or make a deal with them, like... Bring me the broomstick of the Wicked Witch of the West. Right? Only then will I grant you your favors. <laughs> um... I think that'd be cool, and then the DM can actually have, like, three different outcomes, where it's, like, outcome one, where they kind of come back empty-handed, and it's like, okay, well, now what do we gotta do? There's outcome two, in which they just outright kill that creature, and doesn't the weapon disappear with the creature? Is it one I of those? I don't know. Maybe. It might in the material plane. Uh, yeah, maybe. But then there's outcome three, where, um it uh where they actually do the uh, the above and beyond and they actually leave the character a lot the dude alive and they steal his thing mm -hmm. and i feel like that should reward some magical items upon the upon the care upon the group yeah um real quick so you there was before you decided to do the handle there was kind of you know the the thing was washed and then suddenly it was almost like that where everything became shaded and like darker what happened there so um what i did is that i went into um the 
uh, the layer adjustments, which uh, has the <clears throat> the gamut of all like the colors and stuff. And I went into a particular layer adjustment called curves, which allows me to affect where the lightest parts and the darkest parts are. And so I went through each of those channels affecting them, but it didn't show you each of the ch changes that I made until I pressed OK. So jump from light to dark, but all I did was I uh, like I just choke, selected all the colors and just said, make my darkers a little bit darker, add a little bit more red into the scene, remove a little bit of any of the greens or yellows, add a little bit of blue, but not too much, and then cool. All right, cool. Yeah, I was Which wondering. I, I, was like... I need to do. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I was just going to say that, yeah, like normally, um, you know, we sit here, we watch as things just become more and more detailed as you just kind of like shade in more like nooks and crannies, but this time it was just like, ha, <laughs> take that. <Yeah. laughs> Which I think that it's one of those things that I need to like workflow wise, it's a good thing to get into. And I'm already a little bit bad at that. I use lighter um, and maybe like desaturated colors when I like dark contrast and I like deep saturation, but the lighter desaturated one helps me to like finesse things. And then like I could make it darker and keep on adding layer after layer after layer, but I could just like lay like, okay, I think the bones are right. Let's make it just, we'll drop it down a little bit darker, more contrasty, cool. And then we'll add on. And if I wanted to be most efficient, I would probably start out with darker colors and a higher saturation, but that takes some confident strokes and it's hard to, fuss around with things because it just adds up too quickly so i don't know my process yeah i think there's a merit in like doing things the you know the old-fashioned way and like layer by layer like piece by piece but when you you know but we're in an era now in which we have all these tools that you know that really all you have to do is like pinch a dot on a graph and then move it up and everything becomes you know either sharper <laughs> lighter more contrasted less contrasted yada 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 so why not yeah. take advantage of those tools <laughs> um, uh -huh. where you need to which makes it really hard because i i really love traditional stuff i like working with it there is a different feel and texture as well as like for me since that's how I grew up working. Like I'm definitely quicker and more accurate when I'm working with, uh, um, with traditional like mediums. But there's lots of little like, you, there's less like adjustments that you can do. It's just, it is what it is sometimes. And when you mess up, you're like, well, I guess I just have to erase that entire face and start over. Um, and if your eraser is too rough in that area, well, I guess you just stuck there. You should start over. Like. Or in this one, it's just like, oh, all right. I see where I've messed up now. Um, click the graph over two. There we go. OK, we're good. So the Ice Devil is a challenge rating of 14. I wanted to check something real quick. It's a higher challenge rating than an Arcanoloth? Are you kidding me? Why? I know. How? <laughs> Second in command, man. Or I don't know, thirds in command. Creatures push the creature unless the creature is incapacitated makes it safe to throw. What? His wall of ice actually does damage. Walls of ice, I think, do can do damage. I not, forget, but not that I it's remember, interesting. But the two realms, uh, or uh, layers of hell that are icy, uh, there's Stygia. That is just like a proving ground, like glacier realm where like different creatures fight in. But then there's, uh, I think, Cania or Caria or something like that. And that yeah. is like an arcane frozen hell space that is just like an experimental ground. And so the ice demons there are less likely to carry one of the spears, but more likely to do actual like uh, magic and things like that. So maybe maybe like and they don't really it's that there's no, isn't one in the like monster's manual but they have probably all the 
in like Kenya, like they would probably have all the arcane knowledge that any Arcanoloth would have. Plus being, I don't know, being in that cutthroat environment. Yeah, that's that's probably something that a DM would have to include. Um, the other thing too, because I was looking at the challenge rating, I was like, how? Like they have so far, they have all this all the standard things that like a normal monster would have. So like they have a multi attack, and then they go into the details of like what consists of that multi attack. So they've got claws, they've got a tail, but then there's like this there's like this long essay about what their wall of ice can do. And I guess it is different from, like, a wizard's wall of ice because it has a recharge value. It's not just, like, a, it's not just a spell they can do at will. Um, mm -hmm. So it is slightly changed. But it's just this big paragraph of wall of ice, and then that's it. And so I was just like, are you kidding? And that's why I was surprised that it was a challenge rating of 14 with just those things. But um, the, the thing is, is that I believe that the challenge rating that people don't see is that, or the at the additive to that is that um, the factoring of the fact the ice devil is in its environment. Um, I don't believe that an ice devil would be that powerful if you found it in like a stone walled. Well, no, that's not true. Um, in daylight, in a grassy plain. <laughs> Yeah. Although, like, if you kind of like look at this part of the their damage resistances, like, it's resistant to a like bludgeoning, piercing, slashing from non magical attacks not made with a silver weapon, like, which still I guess leaves it vulnerable to like magics. Which, if you're fighting a level fourteen thing, then yeah, you're going to be using magic against it. But then there's also like that. Um, uh, they're just straight up immune to fire which is the most used <laughs> the most used damage in the game right That's but funny. ice devils can also summon up other ice devils that's true although well, i don't know uh, maybe we'll see when we get to the arcana or to the yugoloths do yugoloths also wise. summon other yugoloths because maybe the it's only thing the only thing that can't summon more of a different Yugoloth is the bug. The bug can only summon up to two of itself. <laughs> um, which is still really scary because Yugoloths are crazy if they manage to actually like physically damage you. But a lot of them, a lot of the higher ones don't care about that. You know, they're throwing spells and crap at you, which the Ice Devil seems to do pretty much the same thing. Um, you know, it's got all these crazy, like, physical attacks, but that wall of ice is actually quite crazy as well. Where is... Which is kind of a fun thing, because if you think about it, what it's probably is tactics is, is to wall of ice to separate out people, and then just, like, like all fury of attacking one creature up against the wall <laughs> until it can, like, like, neutralize that one and then, like, go after the other ones while things are being hurt by the wall itself. One thing I am sad about is that they don't have, like, they keep mentioning the the spear every once in a while, but they don't have any stats for it. <laughs> oh, yeah. In the monster manual, it's, like, just above, um, in, like, a little blurb. And then I think I saw that somebody was saying that, like, it's an entire, it's technically a different monster in, like, the D&D Beyond monster manual. But... Some nerdy things I was reading in something, which I didn't do a bunch of fact checking, but the ice devils are not were not like you originally part of the hierarchy of uh, of devils in there. They were their own like category of fiend, which might explain why they're the only ones that are just bugs. Um, but they somehow got roped into a like a really eternal deal kind of thing. Um, to where they're, now they're part of the hierarchy. But before that, they used to be mercenary fiends, much like Yugoloths were. Hmm. And, uh, that sounds like a weird sort of deal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Weird things that I think people come up with, or that get made up in some 
somebody's like book or somebody's like a uh, campaign. <laughs> and then it's like, okay, well, there's a, that's canon now, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. Let's see. So did you try to do some ambiguity or is there an actual like, um, target for what what creatures are below in the mosh pit a lot of it's ambiguity but if you make it bigger uh i think there is like um the two just below i think you know the that that are on the right side i guess um that are a little bit inward i think i was definitely thinking of uh, bearded devils there's this one that's really close that's all in black that's on the left side that has a bunch of spines, so I made a spine devil. Uh, and then I wanted to imagine that there'd be a couple tieflings here because, you know, why not? Um, <laughs> and then I, I wanted to, but at the same time, since, like, uh, the ice devil is large and then most of these things are medium, uh, I didn't end up putting in, like, uh, imps or spine devils um because they're small oh, and tiny so i was just like ah, whatever they're there they're getting lost in the crowd but i thought like most of them especially given like the jagged kind of things are uh bearded devils because they all have the barbed glaives yeah yeah, that was the that was the main like last question that I had beyond the fact that it's like um I I <laughs> it it took me a while but I, I noticed the the actual like the the blade the bladed spines on the tail and I was like, "Ah, oh, nice. Got that in there too." Cuz mm -hmm. that's that's sometimes a detail that gets omitted from some people's designs. Yeah. I kind of wish, which it's weird, the anatomy is strange, and so don't look at it too much, but <laughs> trying to think about, like, how chitinous creatures move about, and what, like, when does it have a chitinous tail? Like, are those different plates? Where are the spikes on of those plates? Like, and a lot of that is you just kind of have to go, like, whatever, it's a, it's a demon, or it's a devil, it's nasty. Don't think yeah. about it. We experienced that when we were doing, or when I was doing the boulette. That was yeah. a nightmare <laughs> to try to figure out in a 3D space. Mm -hmm. And it could be like a rhinoceros, where it's kind of like, it's not exact, exactly plates, but it is like somewhat segments of really thick hide. So there are flexible, but, uh, and there are kind of weak points in them, but it's still just leather. It really thick um so speaking of 3d spaces let us move into my side of the stuff um though mine is less form and it's more function um so if we go jump into blender um i i started off with the idea that i was going to do a chain devil and so I did a little bit of practice before I started recording just to make sure that um, I was going down the right function tree, you know, and um, was actually able to get a chain to operate correctly. And then once I had that, then I was like, all right, cool. So let's start over and let's put a head in there. Um, we'll hide that and put a chain, you know, and start making the chain links and stuff like that. Um, the reason why I say that this is more an, an example of function than form is because I never get any further than chains and put it to the dummy head um, because of a limitation of hardware, actually. <laughs> Um, every time that I would run the the simulation, my computer would be would be arrested for like a good twenty three minutes every single time because it's just not it's it's 
I don't know if I keep if I said it before, but it's like the lower end of the medium side of the of the workhorses, you know. So it's not even like <laughs> it's not that good, but it's not a toaster. <laughs> um, but I knew that if I were, I knew that if I were to put in an, like a full human torso and then do all the chains that I wanted to, that was in my head, I. I'm pretty confident that my graphics card would break. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I just wanted to keep pra So I just kind of used this opportunity to just kind of practice um, and just kind of slowly, like little by little, just kind of test to see how far my, my computer could go within the time limit that I had. Because not only did I have to keep running the simulations over and over again, but in the back of my mind, I knew that I also had to take this recording and put it into my video editor and then render that out. And that takes time also. So it's just, it's just time, you know, but mm -hmm. it's good for practicing time management, <laughs> I suppose. You got to look at the light side of life. <laughs> yeah. so what was your plan with this? So or what did plan... you want to was to do um basically do a just a more sort of drippy version of what you see in the monster manual a lot um the idea was going to be a lot closer to um i don't remember what his name was but the the well i, I it's like the first or the second like big bad boss in um, Roroni Kenshin, where he would set himself on fire a lot. Oh. Yeah, 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 so it would be that sort of a concept where it's just kind of a vague sort of humanoid sort of face, because it's wrapped up in either bandages or more chains. And then, where at the end of his um action arc you know instead of being cleanly wrapped in all these bandages because he's constantly setting himself on fire um the bandages are kind of more loose and like dangly so where the bandages would be it would be chains and then if everything went according to plan i was gonna have to do a walk cycle and the chains would you know be all dangly and clangy mm -hmm. you know around him but the minute that I get to the point where I'm, I'm able to show you, you know, everyone out here about as far as I got, that was too much for my computer. So if I were to go all the way through to what I had in my head, like I said, I believe my graphics card would break. <laughs> um, but the, the reason why I said that I did a, a pre sort of run earlier before I started recording was because, um, the process here that I'm going through is more of a um, of a rigid body simulation. So if anyone ever wanted to do a like a wrecking ball or like a I don't know a backyard swing or something, um, they might want to opt in for a rigid body simulation instead of um, one of the other various simulations, just because it it does that fixed point swing. A lot more effectively um, mm. from what I've experienced so far in doing this the earlier attempt I was trying to do a hair simulation because that's the ultimate goal of where I was going with it was I was going to have this be the chains be the devil's sort of hair you know it was gonna come out of his um, mm -hmm. or its sort of various areas and then I would just kind of um, make these little plates that would have the hair simulation coming off of them and then i would just place the plates where i wanted the chains to exist um but that didn't end up happening because when i would uh when i would apply the chain length to a hair follicle to a quote-unquote hair follicle and then hit the go button um the chains would sort of drift down a little bit but then the minute that it would hit um, the zero degree area on the X and Y axis, it would just sort of halt and just kind of float there and never really get that bend and 
you know that the the nice chain jangle <laughs> if you would chain jangle so it was just kind of yeah it was just weird and i didn't like it so i went with the rigid body simulation and that helped a lot more but it demanded a lot more of my computer so it's as far as i got mm. um though one sort of I, originally it was going to be like all these chains all over the place but in trying to minimize my work um amount within the window i actually kind of fell in love with this concept of um more of like a cenobite sort of like crown of like links in the in the crown of the skull i guess is what that's called um and having the chains kind of dangle from those those um root links you know um so instead of having just this these hair of chains, it's more like a dangling crown. I really, I really <laughs> kind of fell in love with that design, and I wish I could have done more, but uh, I had to. I I just had to get to editing the video and putting it up as fast as I could. Yeah, that was funny when you brought up like like the idea of chains. I was thinking of like a really hairy person. And like like gorilla back hair of chains, but also how it would be it would have to be embedded into them at those points. Like and that'd be so weird to look at. So here we can see the actual um rigid body sort of in action, but very slowly. It's nice. It gets it gets the it gets the F, the effect that I that I really want, and it was just really satisfying to see the chains actually kind of like properly swing. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then once I was happy with the way that it would act, then I could you know go in and like intricately model some um, hooks and blades and stuff and hang it at the end of the of the chain. But. He's what crazy. Yeah, and then like um you know, and then for like extra credit, um some other stuff that I could do is just like try to cut and paste, not not cut and paste, but metaphorically cut and paste. Um the the weird like facial chains that like Xerxes had in 300. Um you know, just just like just just more and more chains you know it's just it, it's a chain devil so you just gotta lean into the chains um mm -hmm. especially at this point where the where the the chains like swing forward from the quote-unquote gravity i thought that that would have been a really cool moment to like freeze one or two of those like later and then put the like hooks on those so it's kind of like this weird like hey come on <laughs> but with chains <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, funny it's... thinking of, I don't know, of like the body suit uh or like the hairs coming off of it like or the chains coming off of it like hairs and if it was like a whole body thing it reminds me of these like these um this African art that I've seen of like these full body like hair things, but also this uh, modern artist that does these like he calls them sound suits. Um, but they're like he makes these like suits that are like a bunch of sticks like put it in or like really bright hairs and like uh, and things. And so when you move, the whole thing like swashes about and stuff. And it's really about the movement. But when you're inside, you really get to hear all the sounds of everything swooshing against each other or jangling or clanking. I think that's like a, a crazy, I don't know, it's, it's a wild interpretation because they kind of like, it's surprising the designs of the chain devil, like how form fitting these chains are, but like, it really could be a crazy cousin it looking thing. <laughs> yeah, that was the original idea. And then I was introduced to the reality of what my computer can do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it, it's kind of like a weird, like, it's like a more rid it's like a how to how to phrase this it's like a more vicious version of the quote-unquote like the childhood lie 
of it's like with blender you can be anything you want to be but the reality is it's only as far as your computer can accommodate <laughs> yeah you're gonna spend money on the program or your computer or both probably both <laughs> buy a, whole, a really nice computer yeah we'll give you this for like free-ish because eh, we know we know <laughs> <laughs> you can either go to college or have a really nice computer your choice um though i i will say that as a weird sort of byproduct in doing up to this point i realized and i made a note just so because i knew i was going to forget about it um that the tutorial videos that I watched just to make sure that I was doing things in the correct order. Um, it sparked the idea in my head that it's kind of like a weird surrogate coworker that's like looking over my shoulder so that when I'm struggling on something, it's just kind of like, uh, you could, you could do that and fix it. Uh, the only problem is that it takes about 20 minutes to get to that, to that point. <laughs> so it's just kind of like, I can imagine there's a person, but it's not the same. <laughs> it's fun, though. So how would you like to use uh, or encounter chain devils in your games or stories? You know, they're kind of a like a background sort of character. So like if your party had to, for some reason, go and visit one of the arch devils or something, you know, like they're walking through their, um, their wizard of Oz type cord, you know, hallway corridor. And they're just kind of like in, but like you can, the camera would sort of pan through and sort of like see a chain devil every once in a while, like between like every other pillar or something like that. Um, they don't really strike me as like an interesting devil all that much. Like they're just kind of, filler <laughs> um because like unlike the unlike the ice devil i didn't really get the impression that they held um because also i should point out that i started really low so i went lemur which technically doesn't even register <laughs> on the radar of like this is a crazy devil um yeah whereas you started at the at tier one technically and then the ice devil is tier two and then you've got pit fiends and arch devil and arch dupes chain devil is still tier one so that's the other reason why i feel like they didn't really have too much going on um mm -hmm. just because they're kind of like the the more interesting commoners <laughs> <laughs> the more interesting commoners <laughs> yeah yeah CR8 <laughs> interesting commoners, but I think it's I don't know, it's weird. Weird looking at like D D and stuff. Um especially in terms of like trying to avoid certain things like the uh the Christian view of what you know what these things are. Um but then, like, in reading a little about, the, like, the chain devil, it's just confusing to me because <laughs> when when I try to, like, think of it, like, all right, hell isn't a place that you go, you get sent to for being bad. It is a place that you have made a deal to go to once you have, you have expired or you have used up whatever they have given you. <laughs> and, well, like, but they were kind of, like, describing this guy as, like, jailer and torturer of souls. I was like, but why? But why? Who does... <laughs> Who's doing bad? Like, I don't know. But well, yeah, what is it? An interesting commoner. It's strange. And then they're like, their move that scares people uh, on their turn, um, but they do so by looking like a departed loved one or enemy of your character. It's like, I, I, I can see some interesting, like, symbolism between chains and, like, the ties that bind us. But, like, but why? How? What what is it? Like, I don't know, man. Just fight it. It's a CRA. Get your experience. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of weird design when it comes to the chain devil. Like it even has an ability called Animate Chains, which up to four chains the devil can see within sixty feet of it, magically sprout razor edged barbs and animate under the devil's control. 
So mm -hmm. in my experience of games that I've played, very rarely it does is is it ever described to me that there are you know chains dangling from the ceiling or you know you're walking through a prison and generally those chains aren't very long so in order for the chain devil to like pop up and be like hey i was actually behind all this craziness because some idiot priest summoned me like three years ago um not that scary of an ability because it's just like all right cool we'll just stay away from the walls then because you know those chains are only like three feet long um Unless the, unless the, it had a room that was catered to that creature, you know, it actually does have like eight to ten feet chains that dangle from the the ceiling, and it's just this large, you know, um, yeah. American gladiator type situation where it's like, <laughs> don't touch the chains. How about not touching the chains when they're moving? Um, it's just yeah. weird. Or, like, somehow you fight them on, like, a dock or something in a place where nobody cares about rust. Like, they're like, oh, the chains that are keeping the boats uh, in the area. Oh, come alive. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, it's a lot of setup. Although, something that I was thinking that, like, it'd be interesting because, um, like, we technically, because of various religions or whatever, uh, have a concept of hell and know and think about it and like have an association but if this is really another plane like in a plane that has its own deals that technically does not necessarily relate to us besides that it's just like trying to recruit from us so that it can do better in its own plane it'd be kind of interesting if nobody like if like if you don't have a connection like the only thing like nobody would really know the term chain devil they might know um chitin um or even beard devil but these are like fighting styles magic things uh, like organizations of stuff like it'd be pretty cool like if like if you uh, had a fighter class or subclass that was the use of like flexible weapons and chains and eventually you start learning how to animate them and stuff like hell yeah i would take that class like you're telling me i can be like scorpion from mortal kombat yes and, but, like, your entire adventuring career happens, and then once your character dies, like, eventually because of, like, gaming or, or because of the adventure or they retire and die of natural causes, then you tell me, hey, guess what? You wake up in hell. You have learned the chain devil ways. Get ready for the eternal blood war. Like, they're like, what, what is this? It's like, yeah, you know, you're all your, like, your sifus and your teachers and stuff that have taught you these techniques. They actually came from this whole plane and their existence of war. Get ready. Like, this is what your existence is now. And the same with, like, bearded devils. Like, if, if you learned that Guan Yu and his whole fighting style of, like, the Guan Dao and, like, the glaives and stuff, all of his awesomeness was really a deal that he made such like uh to learn how to the the bearded devil fighting style techniques and that like all of his heroism like is i don't know it's like a footnote <laughs> tutorial really yeah to the the bigger thing of and then he spent all of existence fighting in the like the blade legion in hell <laughs> like that is way cool and also strange like I don't know. Yeah, in, in yeah, like in my imagination, it's just one of those things where it's like the chain devil could be used as kind of just like the, um, the uh the dock worker, you know, like the the boat comes up, you know, up from the river sticks, and you know the chain devil's the one that kind of helps <laughs> helps Chiron get you know back to the dock, and just like you know, thank you. <laughs> thank you bastard or it's kind of like the hall monitor and just keeps all the lemurs like in check and just like did you corrupt <laughs> a soul today no then 30 lashings <laughs> right um yeah because like it i've seen um because like the way that i would use it is that again like they would just kind of be background stuff and they would only really become com like combative if the players 
start trouble somewhere else. And it's one of those things where it's like they start trouble here and then kind of the rest of the population kind of gets in on that. So it's like, you know, they set a building on fire and maybe like one or two other things kind of come along to try to see like what's causing this commotion. But the chain devils are kind of there to like be the first line of like, we're going to try to apprehend sort of stuff before the higher things come along the things that can actually do <laughs> that can actually do this job um but yeah other than that like they're just not um they're just an interesting commoner <laughs> <laughs> sure. i can't i can't word it any any in any other way like um yikes. although i like i brought up with the uh the bearded devil uh, their glaive and the ice devil's like spear, as well as we, I think we brought up with like the Al Mirage horn or any of like the the chitin shells of like the the bullet or the ink head. I think chain devil like chains is a cool component or magical item to want to acquire. <laughs> <laughs> like I think that would be kind of like a oh yeah, like nothing. Uh, like binds like evil spirits like a chain devil's chains like we yeah, need that would, be a, that would be a weird like trophy slash component for like a cleric to like carry on it's like what like can't you just use any sort of chains like no are you kidding me i had to go all the way to let me see where would chain devils exist um <laughs> i had to go all the way to avernus to get to get these <laughs> to get this chain you give mm -hmm. me water breathing and let me go down to that well, or this part <laughs> is not going anywhere. Um, or alternatively, the DM could position the group to be like, if you want to cast this spell, you got to go and kill a chain devil and try to snip off one of its one of its chains. Because, you know, I think that's an underrated mission, like the the grocery shopping <laughs> mission. Yeah. You know? Which is funny because, like, you do so much of those in, like, so many video games. Like, MMORPGs, like, <laughs> do those a lot. Find us. Well, like, wolf pelts. Or, you know, we need 30 of them, and you complete this. Like, in a real, real scenario of, like, you know what, we need... We need the, the the links of a chain devil. Like we cannot create this <laughs> this net. <laughs> the worst, the most evil dream catcher. <laughs> yeah, I I think that brings up the case of like good, like a good story and kind of a like a mediocre to boring story like version of that same thing. So yes, there is the fetch quest in which it's like go into the forest bring us back like three wolf pellets or something you know but then there's the other version of that where it's um you have to go up into that mountain and all you need is one scale but you have to get it from that dragon if you want to help out like later on in this you know whatever's going on so, you know, then you can, it's a whole story arc where you go up there and then you either have to decide, all right, so how am I going to kill this dragon or what can I do to just convince him to let me have a scale type of a thing? Um, <clears throat> and whenever that pops up in a, in a, in a game, like that's always a lot more enjoyable than just, we need wool. Take these shears and go out in the back, but beware, the sheep have been enchanted to levitate. It's like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> cool. Um, <laughs> it's funny, sorry. I tried to think of like reasons why you would want sheeps to levitate. And then I thought about like how screwed up the veal industry is. Um, of like, uh, usually uh, male baby cows uh are uh are not valued because uh because they can't produce milk so really it's only meat but if they if you grow them to be too big then they're actually drinking up the milk so you're drinking up your like stuff but that's created this weird thing of like selling off baby cows for special meats and it's veal uh 
but then there's like a whole nother thing that if they do not go through physical activity and stuff, then their meat is somehow more tender, more pure in a weird way. So it'd be a weird like magical world economy thing of like, we need to levitate the cows so that they don't actually use any of their muscles. And then they have the, the purest, softest fleshes. Right. I can imagine just like the the bumpkin kids just sitting in the barn just watching the the cows just like balloon around even though we started talking <laughs> about sheep but let's stick with the cows and yeah. um, just doing the same thing that a bunch of people in my age group used to do which is just to watch the DVD thing just like bounce off of the, <laughs> off of the roof yeah. until, it, <laughs> <would try> to, <laughs> until it would try to hit the corner so I could just imagine them painting like a little corner of it, like yellow or something, just watching there. Oh, oh, is he gonna do it? Is he gonna do it? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I, and, um, I was like reading about like Eberron and stuff, and they were talking about like how magic is super everywhere, and that there's so much magic that that really just replaces like uh, technology, or magic is technology, but. Like, adventurers are a special class of people, and they learn a special kind of magic. Like, uh, Fireball is an interesting sort of thing that they learn to do because they're the only ones that would use it. But most people don't have a reason. It's a strange sort of thing. But a really helpful one would be, like, prestidigitation. And, like, really, someone can make a really good job and life just running a cleaners, like, using prestidigitation. <laughs> But in the same way, could you imagine, like, yeah, these, like, farmers that use levitate so the cows, or, like, we can stick with sheep. That sheep never get dirty. You use prestidigitation to clean them, as well as, like, gust to move them around and, like, blow dry them <laughs> so that they have the most luscious, luxurious wool that, is, that never gets sullied. Like, these are, this is amazing. Like, but that, those are those, those three spells, and you are set. Maybe calm emotions, like <laughs> I could see that. Just so animals, that any, like, that's all you're like yeah. Just so that if a, any of them are scared of heights, you just shh. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'd be so weird going through like magical schooling and like learning magical animal husbandry and stuff, and then meeting one of those people that are destined to be adventurers. Like, hey, check it out! I can shoot fireballs. Like. The fuck are you lighting shit on fire? Why would you do th who who needs this? <laughs> little spell. You start the barbecue. Yeah, but I can blow up the barbecue. No, 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 no. Do not blow up the barbecue. You have not learned how to use the mending spell very well, and you can't put it back together. <laughs> Don't make me do this again. Just light the barbecue, Steven. Light the barbecue. <laughs> oh, that would be a really cool concept to to have a a standard party come into a village. But um, all those like you know, all those useless spells um, that take like a minute or like 10 minutes to just like cast as, you know, just as a normal thing, they like everyone in this village knows how to cast that as like just um, just like as an action. And it just happens instantaneously. So like mending would just be a thing that just happens. And all these adventures come in. It's like, you know, they can cast fireball and you know, wall, you know, uh, chromatic wall and stuff like that. But um, they come in and they're just amazed that, like, these villagers can cast all these, you know, level one spells that would take them, like, ten minutes to finish. And it's just like, how? Why? It's like, well, why do you blow stuff up? <laughs> you know, if you'd spend a lot less time blowing stuff up and fixing, you know, fixing the wall, then maybe you could cast mending as fast as I can. Like the right. the swamp bent the swamp or the sand benders. It's just like how how are you doing that? It's like well, if you lived here, you could do it too. But no, you want to go and live in high society. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. so then that brings us to what will come up in the next installment of some sort of <laughs> talk show. Um. I guess we're choosing an archdevil or duke, duchess, and we're going to present that. Except that's a lot harder, I think, <laughs> than the demons. Because there's not a lot of, like, visual representation of a handful of them. 
Um, so you should have thought ahead. I knew what mine was going to look like. <laughs> <laughs> Although there's not a whole lot of representation of the ones that I want, but since we're in Stygia, we have two choices. Either I'm doing um, Levitus, who is a demon stuck inside of a giant glacier, <laughs> or I think Garion, which is a snake man thing. Hmm. Now that'd be cool. Yeah, I've just been sort of sneaking by, and so I don't really have an I don't have an actual ring <laughs> at all. Um, we'll see. We shall which see. I'm doing like I guess it's so it's so weird. Like the first level of hell, in my opinion, should be the most dangerous since it's like Avernus, and Avernus is like the battlegrounds between hell and like the abyss. So you should have your most powerful things there. But it's really topsy-turvy. I don't think they thought about it when they wrote it all. <laughs> but you could do uh, Zeriel. That's where it's, I don't know. You've been doing surface things that have, like, art of. But you hate people with wings. Oh, is that what Zeriel is? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, a really easy thing to, do, to have done would have been to just throw the um, Arianis. How do those mm -hmm. letters work together again? Because all I would have yeah. had to do is take that um, winged lady that I did a long time ago and just um, clean that model up. But you still can. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> um, so yeah, next time um, the tops of the tops, we're getting to the CEOs and. Um, we're going to either do a really good job or a really lazy job. So um, tune in next time. You can catch Even and some of his other art escapades on Instagram um, at his handle below. And if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, be sure to check uh, this show out live on Sundays at 2 o'clock p.m. until we change it, if ever, which I doubt. But... Um, yeah, at twitch.tv slash foxstar. That's F-O-X-S-T-A-R-R -R underscore. Um, so thank you for tuning in, and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye, Internet.